Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am sending here supporting my favorite team, Juventus. Oh no, that's this side, Juventus. And I'm here to guide you through the process of finishing the authentication module that we have to build for our app. Um, mainly what we have to figure out is how to properly log the user in. Uh, authorize them, uh, protect our other routes from unauthorized users, and then uh, how to um, log him out. So as you can tell, uh, this part will be in repository as part four, the uh, underscore login. So basically, yeah, let's let's get cracking. Um, what we have to start with is defining a route here. So this is going to be post because user has to send his credentials. Login. Uh, we'll change the um, HTTP code using HTTP code decorator because I believe by default in NestJS, when you have successfully uh, and the post um, request, the NestJS by default sends 201 created code. And in this case, we're, well, not really creating anything. So I believe that 200, okay, should be better. Uh, and then let's just create our login. And we'll do some stuff around here but uh, one thing we have to do is to make sure that the credentials provided by the user are um, are correct right so no one is trying to break into our app and there's a special part of nest.js to do just that, I mean, you can set up something that is called a guard in NestJS, you know, like the guard guarding, I don't know, the safe or vault. And um, what guard does is it has some internal logic that will decide whether to actually run the function in the controller or stop it, meaning whether the request should be uh, somehow um, somehow transformed and used further, or should it be should it just throw an error or maybe silently swallow the request, which is never good, almost never. So what we'll have to write here is a guard using use guards. Okay, and we can go to the documentation to see how to do that. Um, documentation, which is just wonderful, really. And we need a guard. Okay, guard should implement can activate, meaning we have a guard before our route handler that will tell whether we can activate given function in a controller. Okay. So that looks like it returns some validate request or can activate interface. So let's see about that. Uh, this is our uh, local authentication guard. So let's do that new file. Local authentication guard. Yes. Okay, so it has to be injectable so that we can use that in our controller. And this definition is going to be rather easy because, as you remember, all of our uh, authorization and authentication will be held by passport and 
Passport has the authorization guard built in with a local strategy. So what do you write here is just a simple class, local authentication guard that extends some other class, which is auth guard. And we, and we should have that from um from nest js passport just need to check where we have where we have this actually installed of guard do we even have that module let's check package json and nest uh, oh, these are dev dependencies. Yeah, basically we need to install that. Split and do um, here you can see it. Maybe not here, but role based authentication. Let's see uh, where this mentioned password. Not here, but in, in security. In authentication, I believe you would see Nest.js passport module, which we should install. So let's grab that. This is one thing we should install. So this is um, a library that connects the Nest.js and passport. Okay, that's done. And the second thing is uh, types for passport local strategies. And uh, there are many strategies. Um, basically, I believe that strategy is a class that has to implement some kind of validate method. This is what it is to solve whether the user should be allowed to access our app. Uh, and there's JWT token strategy, which we'll use, but you can also rely on stuff like OAuth provided from Google, Twitter, Discord, basically any third party provider that can confirm users' identity. So uh, we should be good here, right? Form is not a correct word here. Let's uh, add that to user dictionary. Okay, and now we're all good. But um, the guard itself isn't enough. It's good that we have that. And this is the part that is used by Nest.js. Now we have to write the part that is used by Passport. So what I will do here is create another file and call it a local strategy ts so the strategy is the part that you have to implement for passport the guard is the part that you have to implement for nsjs and then the guard uses given strategy okay i believe that makes sense so we also have to make it injectable right and then we will uh, write that this local strategy uh, extends passport strategy of strategy. Okay. Uh, yeah. And how do I know that? Mm. Come on. Uh, yeah. This is the basically the definition that we'll use okay okay uh, also we have to inject the out service so constructor uh, will do private read only out service of type out service and dependency injection will uh, inject that for us um one thing though, uh, we have to configure 
the uh, password strategy and you can do that by uh, calling super and you will call the constructor of the parent class and one thing we have to change uh, the strategy by default uses username for the validation purposes uh, in our case we decided to use email to be our main identificator of a user so we have to specify here username field that's an email so we'll change that and then as i mentioned strategy has to um to implement one function and this is validate validate email string and password is also a string of promise user okay from voice tortoise from voice okay that makes more sense uh, we'll import it okay and now what we actually have to do uh, is to well maybe let's try ac and see let's change it from user for now to be a boolean right and just just to figure out how it works really and let's return false okay so the validation will always return false we could also probably return null here uh, and now in our app controller i will use our guard which is local authentication guard okay and remember the guard will not allow the login function to run if the user isn't validated to be precise if the strategy won't return something that makes sense to the guard so for now i will do console log here's here is login function okay and let's, let's run uh, this um, i believe we will have some missing dependencies to add to our module uh, yeah and this is going to be um provider being the uh, local strategy okay uh, authentication strategies must have a name um, and this is from password meaning we did something wrong mm, this is off guard being local local authentication guard and then there's a local strategy which seems fine with me um, oh i know i know uh, i believe i know in the out module what we also need uh, is um user module that's fine also need pass passport module from passport so that we can actually use it with nest.js let's try now authentication strategies must have a name this is interesting Um, uh, import strategy from passport strategy. Okay, so from passport really okay Let's see now uh, 
so which one should this be? From NestJS Passport. And then uh oh sorry it's definitely wrong strategy is from passport local yes and the passport strategy is from nestjs passport again i agree duplicate identify oh i have it above Something so wrong. Uh, so strategy is from passport oh no strategy is from passport local now okay so few issues with imports um okay let's fire up the pg admin right now and let's add a console lock here i will validate and now um you are using this database this schemas tables okay so let's try this now um we have the route we have the authentication guard so let's see uh this is tundra client this is login and i would like to post and body is already provided so let's see i get 401 unauthorized right Let's see, this fires up, I will validate. So the local strategy runs. Let's see what happens if I will send through, through here. Okay. Here is login function, you see? So that basically how it works, okay? Our strategy has to implement validate and it, if it will resolve to a value that is truthy, meaning some kind of object, user object, for example, or, uh, I don't know, true, one, it will just pass on to the next function in chain, which in our case is the login, right? If we will return zero, false, null, undefined, it will stop there. And this well, is a place to um, to throw some exception, for example. But moving on to the real world, right? Uh, we will write, we'll use our service to check authenticated user whether this user actually exists with that email and that password. Um, okay, now we have to go to the out service here and we'll implement function uh, public async get authenticated user. And this is a job of our service, right? Because services are for con stuff that connects to database or some other data provider and this is string and the second argument is plan is actually 
uh, plain text password because user provides the password in a plain text. Okay, so let's see that. We will need try catch clause here. What we'll do is we'll try to find the user. So we'll use a user service find by, huh. We only have find by ID. What we need is find by email. So to the user service we go and this is find by ID. So let's do pretty much the same find by email. Um, email is going to be a string. Uh, we'll try to find the user. This user repo find one email, right? And if the user is there, return the return the user. If not, throw new HTTP exception. It's gonna be user does not exist, and the. Uh, Status is um, status is not found. Okay, looking good. Um, so that's it when it comes to finding the user by email. Now back to our app service, find by email. Let's pass that here. Now. What we have to do is we have to verify the password that we've got from user with the one stored into the data database uh, by using Bycrypt. So I'll create a small helper function here. Password and it's gonna be plain text password and user password okay uh, and you can kind of see here that what i'm trying to do is to split the code in small readable uh, function that only have one responsibility this this is always a good approach to, to try uh, to writing code okay and this is going to be very easy uh, we'll verify password. Uh, there's plain text password, which is a string, and password, uh, hashed password, or password from DB is also a good name. Okay. Uh, are passwords matching? Uh, we'll use the bycrypt and it has built-in method called compare uh, this is yeah you can see the use of it even there's plain text password and some other plain text password and then you okay thank you and then you just call compare. So uh, we will pass plain text password here and hash password here. Um, this is looking good. And if uh, passwords, passwords aren't matching, we'll just simply throw new exception. So throw new HTTP exception uh wrong credentials provided um http uh, status bad request okay and um 
yeah i believe that's good that's good so if we have a, a password here we decide that the user is allowed to access because there is a user with given email and there is a user with given password we just add undefined here so this is not passed back to the user of course there is better way of handling that but We'll get there when we'll get there. Um, let's check local strategy. Uh, yeah, this is no longer, this should be user. <sighs> okay, so now uh, let's just see one thing. Before I did that and I was returning through here, change it to boolean again i could have passed any password here right and it would work and go to the login function as you can see at the bottom here right but now since we're actually validating the password and the email Trying to pass the wrong password will return an error, unauthorized, right? Only if I pass the correct email and correct password will I get the status OK. Whew. So that was one part. Um, we verified the email and password, and that's good. Now, to the second very important part. Uh, the HTTP protocol is stateless, meaning the server doesn't know and shouldn't know about the previous requests that the user performed. So we cannot just leave it like this and somehow force our server to remember that we already perform the uh, correct login uh, login um, request we have to give something back to the user that will allow him to authenticate himself uh, to perform further requests to the resources that uh, we consider secured, right? So what we'll use, it will we'll use uh, cookies and uh, JWT tokens. So uh, if you'd like to learn more about JSON web tokens, there's this wonderful site here that will explain you yep all about it right um so we have to somehow decode verify and generate json web tokens and we'll generate that token and we will store it in a cookie that we will send to the user and why cookie you might ask well uh we can make it somehow invisible to the front end meaning the front end doesn't have to worry so much about storing the token and and i don't know putting it to local storage removing it and so forth and so on we can do this out do this automatically because uh, there's this special uh, header available of for us to set on response and it's called set cookie header uh, yeah so we can send that cookie from the server to the user agent so the user agent can send it back to the server later and um, there's an advantage to using that I mean the server can set the cookie and then the front-end app will not have to worry about um, about 
adding this cookie somehow to the request. It will be done automatically uh, if the if the I believe if domain of the cookie is matching. We'll see about that. I hope it will work. We'll see. Uh, or maybe it doesn't have to match. I don't really remember. But what we have to do now is um, let's see. It's actually logging the user. So going to the controller. So this is auf controller. We have to change the implementation of our uh, cookie. Um, let's see. We will log the user in, and in our request, right? Uh, basically, we don't need a request. Uh, well, we have to specify it. Or do we need it? Yeah, we might. We might need. It. Okay, we'll get our request with all requests, not only uh, I know body or some query param. It's gonna be a request, and this is gonna be um, gonna be request with user can name it like this. So what he had to do is to make sure that the user that we got here is, um, is added to the request that is passed further to the login method. And I believe this happens automatically in SJS since we're returning user here. Uh, but we can check it. Uh, let's start with creating the interface that we need. And I will name it request with user.i.ps. Um, you can also define this interface in the very same class of the controller, but it's fine to do it here. So interface request with user, thank you extends a request and we have to take the request from express okay so that's good and it should have user property from our entity export default request with user so that's that uh, let's import it and let's see where we actually have something like this in our request. So we'll expect our request to have user property. Uh, we can test it rather easily. Uh, let's go to the login. I know that these values are correct. And we have it. So, uh, the stuff that is returned from our strategy is being injected to the request and the password isn't really uh, needed for us. Uh, so now what we can do is actually, um, actually encode the information about our user into the cookie. Okay. So, uh, this is undefined. This is good. What I will write is cookie and we'll ask our uh, authentication service to uh, perform the, the um, build process. Well, create the string that is our cookie. So get cookie with JWT token and we'll pass request user okay so back to our our service and this is rather easy because all in all the cookie is uh, only a, a string that we need to send back right so 
let's create get cookie uh, with jwt token. Uh, this is taken on user. Um, what we need is to specify the payload for our token because in the end you can basically encode any kind of information that you'd like into the token. So um, I will create our interface and uh, I will call it, uh, let's create it here, a token payload.i.ts, right? Uh, and actually just to make things more tidy, Let's move that here and let's move that here. Okay. Uh, and this isn't really anything special. It's just a simple interface token payload um, user. User. Uh, you miss a semicolon, right? Right. Token payload. Okay. Uh, so now we can go back and say that payload is token payload, which has only one thing here. We need to import that probably. Okay. And now we need to create token. And to do that, we need to use the um, JSON Web Token service that is provided uh, for us, what should be, from the NestJS JWT. And let's see. Uh, yeah, it's here. And we'll need to inject it. And I don't know where this actually shows how to how to write that into a cookie. No, not really, but we'll handle that. So let's start by adding stuff that we need. So we need passport JWT and NestJS JWT. So that's the first part. A PM not the same as npm and then we need to add the types oh, that one's gonna be long we can power through okay what is wrong cannot find okay come on um, you can't find something. Let's just save all for now. Okay, which should be good. We have that. So uh, we need to inject the JWT here. So let's add that private read only JWT service is of type JWT service. Um, I added this to controller, but I need this in service actually. Yep. Okay, uh, import the type. Um, yes, it should be now we should be able to do this service. You can do sign async. Uh, and what you do is basically, I believe you pass the payload. Uh, or we could do just sign. That should create our 
token. Well, the problem is, of course, as you uh, imagine that uh, NestJS won't be able to resolve the JWT service by its own. We have to help them a little bit. So let's go to the auth module. And what we basically have to do is to configure our service. So uh, imports JWT service, but that uh, isn't enough. Well, it will probably run. Yeah, we have to specify options, right? So the stuff that we'll use, we'll use red. Uh, yep, that is right. We should use register. Oh, sorry, we should actually import whole module to configure it. Um, register async. And take that off. It hurts my head. Um, and I don't need it. I just put it on to look cool and to have some noise cancelling from the background, but it's fine. Uh, configuration for the JWT module, we actually need to use our configuration module. And why is that? Because we defined some values for JWT in our environmental variables. So let's do that. Um, it should import the config module. It also inject the config module. And then we can use factory function to basically uh, configure JWT module. So since we are injecting the config module, uh, config service actually is what I want to inject. Okay. I get this injected here because of the line up because of the line above. And now the secret is of course config service get this is JWT secret and then there are additional options sign options expires in and we set that in and it has to be a string config service get JWT expiration time in seconds. Uh, is that correct? Somehow it's not. Mm, what did I forget? Oh, of course. Okay. That looks correct. And it looks like it's working. Uh, we have that configured. We don't need anything from RxJS. Maybe one day we'll learn a bit about RxJS, but there's so much to learn. It's crazy. Um, okay. With that done, uh, we are actually uh, going to, okay, we have a token, that's fine. Now we have to create a cookie. So return and it's authentication cookie, just have value of a token, right? Uh, it should be HTTP only. Uh, we we are specifying HTTP only value here, so it's not readable by JavaScript. It's only for the browser and for the authentication purposes. And the path should be empty. Uh, and max age, which is basically the expiration time of the cookie, it should be the same as the token. So this con 
service. Oh, we need a config service here, right? Uh, okay. Private read only config service just to match the expiration of the cookie. Um, what is your problem? Uh, let's um, finish that. Again, we have to specify some stuff about the dependency injection. Um, it's annoying, but you can get used to it. It's basically the same as if you would not export something from, from your ES6 module. Uh, let's see. Uh, auf module. Uh, I believe we have to add its config module here. Right, right. Okay, and that should create the cooking. So uh, this goes back to the controller, right? We have the cookie. And now uh, we have to set it. So we can do request, response, set header. And we have to specify this value precisely so that uh, the browser can take that cookie and set it on its own. And there's a cookie. And, and return a request. Uh, send, no, we can do that, response, send, yeah, um, user, yeah, so if you receive user, uh, sorry, request, well, actually, I can pack it, just to not repeat myself, Okay, this will not run. So basically, if you log in properly, uh, you should get 200 code. You should get a cookie in the header of the response, and you should get uh, your user, I mean you, as a JSON. Okay? So, this is one thing. Another thing that we need actually is to um, prepare a strategy to uh, check for the cookie, right? Because let's let's just for fun say a nest generate module collections. This is going to be a separate resource that we'd like to uh, protect from an authorized user. And then generate controller, controller collections. Yep. Okay, and let's get here and here and here. And what we'll do is we'll uh, simply say get, because we will have collections of games in our library, like for example, the best RPGs of Decade or something like that. And it's going to be get collections, return. you should get collections. Okay, and now, uh, if I go to my um, to my Thunder client, 
and call this URL, I will get collections, right? Because as I mentioned before, HTTP um, protocol is stateless. So it doesn't know that we log the user in before, right? Uh, and we also do not protect that route in any way, right? And we'd like to do that. We'd like to say only the user that has a cookie uh, and uh, the proper payload, I mean, some kind of user, preferably that user in the payload is allowed to access that route. And as you can imagine, we should use a guard here. And we will create JWT of guard. Okay. So this is another guard that we have to uh, create. Let's actually close out this because it's becoming too messy. Uh, and here we'll create JWT of guard.ts, right? Okay, and just to be uh, concise, I'll change that to be that and that, and it should. Um, it should auto update, but it does not. Um, let's see. This looks good. Uh, what problems do we have? This doesn't exist. That's right. You have no exported member. Are you sure? Local alf guard. Okay. Yeah. So this will implement here. And this is a little bit more complicated uh, when it comes to strategy, but the guard is very simple. It's injectable. Right? And then there's only one class default export export plus JWT of guard extends of guard JWT um, and empty class injectable now so this is fine you can use that here um, everything complies compiles as expected we need to write the uh, strategy for our guard so let's do that it's going to be jwt jwt strategy ts okay and it's pretty similar it has to implement the validate uh, method but we'll have to do some configuration I meaning we'll have to read the cookie from the request right so also injectable it's one thing then it's class JWT strategy extends passport strategy strategy and this strategy should come from passport JWT. Okay, check your imports here. Okay. Uh, constructor will need, need two things injected here. It's going to be a uh, config service. This is one thing. Second thing is user service. 
do we need it really uh no we don't need user service config services enough okay uh so basically what we have to do is to um extract the cookie with the token from the request right and then check whether it's correct okay so what we'll do is call supper a uh, super uh, meaning the parent constructor and here we can provide few values that are not highlighting so that's a little problem but let's see that should be jwt from request and how do i know that um let's see there should be strategy yes here it's sent as a bearer token as you can see in documentation uh, but i didn't want to manage the token by myself i wanted to use cookies and here is another solution for that meaning the one we'd like to do uh, supplies the method by which the JW2 will be extracted from the request. We'll use the standard approach of supply, supplying a builder token in authorization header. But we will not, because we're the cool kids. Okay, so uh, extract JWT. This is from passport JWT from ec extractors, and we'll build our extractor for a request and this array of functions meaning i believe you can pass few different options to extract the, the jwt which is kind of cool because it gives the um, gives your clients ability to send the token in few different ways okay and this is of type request from express and what we can do here is we will console log the request cookies just to see it and we will return request cookies and that's going to be out and the out and the patient i do i know that is going to be authentication because our service here we use that that's basically the cookie name okay so we have that and then we have to provide secret or key to validate the token and this lives in config service jwt secret okay uh, and of course, we are supposed to validate the um, this uh, strategy. So we we'll basically say if there's a user in the payload, it's fine, right? Because we encoded it earlier and we expect it to be there. And also, um, that allows us to uh, use the request with user interface in all protected requests. Uh, meaning, well, basically, you always, always, you always have to have the user when doing, when fetching other data from from your um, API. If you think about it, that makes sense because basically if you perform the collection call, you'd like to know for which user you should get the collections or games from database. So that's that. We'll export it. Uh, but I believe that's not all because it also has to, uh, it also have to be used in our auth module 
So there's a local strategy. We have to add JWT strategy. That should be fine. Well, let's check whether uh, the route is now protected. So let's go to collections. And have internal server error. That's, that's, that's perfect. Cannot read property authentication of undefined. Okay, um, not really what I expected. I expected something like, oh, there, there's no cookies in this request, right? So, oh yeah, we can just use the optional chaining here right because otherwise there's that's this cool trick in typescript i would have to go request and request cookies and the type of cookies is well i don't know but in this case it's undefined and then i would have to go request cookies authentication you probably have to do if you're using earlier versions of TypeScript or plain JavaScript. But there's this cool optional thing that you will see in languages like Dart or Swift, where you can shorten this something like that. Here, let's try this again. 401 unauthorized. Perfect. And this is because. Um, well, there was no cooking, okay? So, uh, how do we change that? Uh, let's see, we should basically add a lip cooking authentic, or we should log in for the starters. So let's do that. We are logged in and in the headers, you can see set cookie here and authentication value. Okay. And now going to collections, uh, right. I can add cookie out Vacation here and it's still unauthorized. Response, response, and header. Okay, I'm um, fine that. So we do this like that. Response, 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 I should be forced to do that. Well, let's see. There's a login. It's my query questions. Uh, there's a question for API, probably. And this isn't working for reasons unknown. It's unfined. Maybe there's some problem. Okay, so the request is definitely there. There, I'm And maybe we have a typo in our key. Let's see. Authentication. Path mass page. HTTP only path mass page. Authentication. This is me. Um, the other thing, which I don't know. Let's see about the header. Um, let's see, this should be out of our set cooking, set cooking, cooking. And this is looking good. We're still not right. Okay, let's try. Let's see the postman. And so that we should. Um, okay, I'll just have to prepare. The answer is here. The other question is here. And then, let's see cooking. Out and the question. Huh. Still not right. Why? Why there's no cooking? okay guys it took some time but i think i figured that one out so what we need to add to our project is npm install cookie parser because otherwise the cookies are undefined for fuck's sake i love programming okay with that added I believe we should go to our main file, uh, which is here, 
and then say app use to add the cookie middleware and this is import as cookie parser from cookie parser and this is cookie parser and now Okay, that does not look too good. Why, why are you start? Okay, let's try this again. Login. Oh, oh, and let's call it maybe. Yeah, yeah I, I expected that much. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And now we're still unauthorized, but we have the cookie, uh, which is good. So what's the problem then? Let's see that. Uh, payload is user uh, let's see payload user that that looks good to me so what let's let's see this again oh the payload has payload inside it mm, that's not really what I wanted let's see uh, yeah. yeah 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 okay that's why Too much nesting. Let's try this again. It's correct. Uh, so and now that's correct. Finally. Okay. Whew. So we can sign the user in. The last thing for us uh, to do is to sign the user out, right? So let's go to the auth controller. And basically, well, how to log user out? There's only one thing with use of the cookie that we can really do here. And it is to, um, to remove the cookie from the browser. And to do that, you have to specify the uh, max age or expiration date, something like that, to be past date. So if the cookie gets the information, if the browser gets the information that the cookie is expired, it will remove it from the browser, okay? So let's add it here. Uh, we'll do this as a post. Logout, we have to use the use guard. So only the user that is actually signed in can sign out. Of guard, that's good. Async log out request we can ignore it but we have to have it on the argument list and we'll use response of course to set the new cookie response set header um set cookie uh, this our service and we'll get cookie for logout let's go to the our service okay uh, and i believe what we have to do is to set the max age to zero and that should be it so public 
uh, actually let's keep the private methods below it makes sense to have some order in your class uh, get cookie for logout um, nothing here and we will return authentication has no value now so you cannot sign it anymore http only true path doesn't matter and max age is set to zero which should remove it from the browser okay um yeah that should be that um that should be imported Requ request and response send and that should be it so let's try that now let's sign out create it that's not really perfect i believe that the uh 200 okay it's better here uh, okay um nevertheless we should be signed out so i shouldn't be able to access the collections right now yeah i'm authorized if i log in i should be able to access that and if i log out i shouldn't be oh come Whew. that was long and exhausting exhausting but uh yeah, that's basically how we can set up login and registration and logout and JWT in SJS. In the next episode, I believe I will show you some, well, maybe less popular elements of NestJS that you can use uh, to your advantage. Uh, and then, well, I believe it will be time to build our registration form and our login form for our app using Next.js, Next.js, React, TypeScript, and maybe we'll go with Tailwind. We'll see. So anyway, thank you if you made it through to the end, and I will see you in the next one.